my name is Yuri Kostov from Mouse, and we are back for another track guide. This time it's week nine on the VRS uh, GT Sprint Series on iRacing. Um, we are at Zanford, very small track, especially for GT3 cars, a small track. They go in real life as well. Um, it's very nice to lap. Uh, it's tricky to overtake. It's got a really nice flow to it. So let's have a look how hot lapping on this track looks like. Right, so here we are, last sector as always. Running race fuel. About to start the lap. It's a very short and tight track. A lot of corners combining into each other. Let's have a look how this drives. For turn one at the thousand box, we want to break just before the white line. We cheat to the inside quite early because of the camera here. Use the curb on the left side. Small tap on the brake. Try to get it rotated. Keep it tight on the entry here. Make sure to get a decent exit. Then we're all the way flat here. Up to scave lock. Scave lock. Small tap down on the brakes. One gear down. Make sure to not carry too much entry speed. All the way to the left side here. Try to take a bit of the curb. Easy to break too late for this corner here. Keep it tight. Careful on your brake inputs here. Try to focus on getting a good exit. Then break just before the curb as you can. Open up the last corner as much as you can. Take a lot of curb on the inside here. Late apex in the last corner that will allow you to take it flat out. That's the lap around Sandford. Let's have a closer look how this looks like from the outside. Right, so here we are, start the lap. And for turn one, we want to be looking for this white line here across the track. I want to break just before it. And because there's a camber in the track here, we don't have to stay all the way to the outside. We can break a bit towards the inside. That way we can uh, break it tiny bit later and sacrifice the exit a bit. But the exit is not that important. Because A, we have the camber in the corner. Uh, it's not as bad to sacrifice the exit because we can keep the speed up. And there's not a long straight afterwards. So we can cheat towards the inside a bit. So going towards the inside a bit instead of just hugging the outside white line here and you see while we're breaking for the corner here we're already quite far down the, the, out, the inside instead of keeping it to the left then we want to follow the inside curb here go on your power you can dip a tire on the gravel here without getting off track without losing too much time so you can really push and try to use all of this curb here and not get punished as hard if you dip slightly into the gravel then turn 2-3 you want to Use this curb here on the left side to open up turn three as much as you can. Because turn three is always tricky. It always tends to understeer to the left side here. It's really easy to dip the tire on the grass on the left side. And once you do that, uh, you're going to miss uh, turn four. So, car always wants to understeer here. You want to open it up as much as you can. And try to enter from around the middle of the track here. If you want to enter from the whole right side, you have to sacrifice turn three too much. If you enter all the way from the left side, you're going to sacrifice the exit too much. You can either follow the inside curb the whole time here, or I carry a tiny bit too much entry speed, but because there's camber here, uh, if you run a bit wide on the entry, um, you can make that up by getting a good exit out of the corner. There's the curb on the right side there as well. And then the next part here, it's a bit twisty, but it's easy, easy flat. Just follow the shortest line. Then, Schijflak here is probably the trickiest corner of the track. Um, there's a bump when you get to the top here. You want to be flat till after the bump at least. And then, uh, between this curb and this uh, entry road on the left side, you want to brake. Down one gear and make sure that you're not trail breaking too much into the corner. Because the rear is very, very light. That means the rear wants to step out really early. 
And if you trail break too much here, so if you keep breaking too much into the corner, the rear is going to step out on you and it's going to uh, cause you got to spin. So as you can see, quite early here, I'm a bit on throttle again. And what that does is put a bit of weight on the rear where it's going to be light. And it helps with the stability in the car through the corner. Keep the speed up. Again, open up this corner as much as you can. It opens up by itself quite a bit to the left. We can run a bit over the grass here. And then try to be as far to this white line as you can. But obviously we can't be all the way to the white line. Because it opens up too much. And we'll be going into the wall. Small tap down. You can take a bit of the inside curb here. And this is one of those corners where the car always understeers. So you need to be careful of not running too deep. If you run too deep here. The car understeers an entry. You're going to struggle with going back into the power. And then you're going to struggle staying out of the grass. All the way to the left side there. And then we get to the trickiest braking corner, I think, of the track. Um, we need to be braking while we're turning here. And it's very, very easy to start braking too late. We're braking really, really early here. But as you can see, I need to trail off the brakes really, really quickly here. Trail off the brakes really quickly. Otherwise, um, we're going to be braking and turning too much. And the tires won't be able to handle it. That way we start braking really, really early and try to make sure we hit the apex uh, rather than making up time into the corner. It's very, very easy to try to make up time into the corner and then lose twice as much in the corner itself here because as we'll see on the exit here, if we're too far to the left side, you're going to struggle to make it over to the right side in time. We can't really use all of the exit here uh, and get a good entry for the next uh, left-hander. Um, if you run too far to the left side here, it's not a horrible line, but then you have to sacrifice the entry to the next left-hander a bit. Um, it can be a decent line if you try to overtake, for example. Uh, run a bit wider here, get a bit of a better exit, and then sacrifice the uh, exit of the left-hander by just going in fast an entry and try to go side-by-side. Side. And that way, uh, might be able to surprise someone. We're driving alone, though, so we're trying to open up the score as much as we can. Break about 20 meters before this excess road on the right side. And again, because we're turning and braking again, we don't want to be having too much brake input. The rear is going to be very unstable here. And only get towards the inside quite late here. That will improve your exit speed. And we've got quite a long straight afterwards. So it's quite important. And again, it's a bit of a bend, but it's just straight. And all you want to do is make sure that you're braking here for the chicane. It's a hard braking zone that you're braking is in a straight line. So you want to be coming not quite hugging the white line, but a bit from the middle. And then once we're at the braking here, your car wants to be exactly straight following this line on the left as much as we can. We don't want to follow this to the left side while braking. Because then we set up the car to the wrong side of the track. And when we're turning and braking, we can't brake as hard. So we want to brake in a straight line. Slowly make it over to the right side. We take this curve on the right side here. Second gear. We can take a lot of the inside curve here. It helps the car rotate as well. I got a short straight coming up here. I use this point here where the, uh, the track starts a bit to the left side of the right line as a reference point to start turning in. Small tap on the brake just before that. And you can take all of this curve on the inside here without getting the off track. Go on throttle as quick as you can, but uh, unlike turn one, the gravel on the outside here is a very big punish. So if you hit this, you're going to struggle getting back in time for the last corner at all. Um, you might even understeer all the way to this gravel trap or even into the wall. So unlike turn one, try to get as close as you dare to the outside gravel here. But be really careful because going slightly over the limit will be a big punishment here. So as close to this gravel as you can, uh, consistently do it without going off the track. And then the last corner, you want to make sure to stay on the outside for a really, really long time, it feels like. If you're on the inside here already, you're going to be struggling to keep it flat out. So you want to be getting to the inside only when the curve is on the, the right side. And that way you can easily take it flat and start your next lap again on this lovely track in the dunes of Zandvoort. Right, there you go. Nice track guide around Sanford. Nice track between the dunes. It's got a very nice flow. I think it's really nice to lap. Might be nice to race as well. Going to be uh, important to nail your laps in qualifying. I wish you all good luck. 
And if you want to see more lab guides like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel.